What's up guys and welcome back to another video. So recently I started shooting an S-Log2. If you've ever shot an S-Log2, you know how challenging the noise can be in the darker areas. And I may have come up with a solution for the noise. And as anyone who's tried shooting with S-Log knows, it can be disappointing, frustrating, but when you get it right, rewarding with its massive dynamic range. But for now, we'll talk about my initial experience. So I shot some stuff in S-Log2, initially shocked at how bright it looked on the back of the camera, only to see that it was still way underexposed when I got it on my computer. So I shot some more things with it exposed brighter and got better results. However, I was still getting some weird blocky colorful artifacts in skin tones and in shadows, and especially in shadowy skin tones. So anytime I had to add any brightness in post, it was an absolute noise fest. And being me new to S-Log and seeing that the lowest I could set my ISO was 800, I decided to blame some of that noise on the higher minimum ISO. So sometime later, after getting some somewhat reasonable results with S-Log, but still pouring hours into messing with the footage, trying different LUTs, having a hell of a time with even the LUTs provided by Sony for the Rec. 709 conversion. There's probably better ones out there. That's what I was messing with. But I shot some short little product videos using S-Log. But while I was shooting these tabletop shots, I was shooting with a wide open aperture, the slowest shutter speed that I could, and I had my lights turned up all the way, but I was still a little underexposed. But I wasn't about to raise the ISO because higher ISO means more noise, right? Well, I certainly thought so. So after I loaded the footage up on my computer, I had to brighten a lot of the shots and the noise was pretty bad, but still usable. Thank goodness I didn't raise the ISO, otherwise I'd have been screwed, right? But then I thought, would I have been screwed? So I watched like a dozen YouTube videos and a lot of people's fixes for the blocky colors was cranking up the saturation in the picture profile, making sure you were exposed correctly. And I probably watched two solid hours of Gerald Undone grinding through the nitty gritty details about profile pictures. But I never truly found the answer to the question I was asking, which is it better to crank your ISO up to reach your exposure or to brighten it in post to avoid the high ISO noise that I assumed was gonna be there because of how noisy the S-Log footage has been in my experience. So I decided to do some tests of my own and the results are somewhat expected, but still very surprising if that makes any sense. So let's get into what I did and the results. So a couple critical things that I learned from Gerald Undone is that the zebras for your skin tone exposure, for medium to fair skin, you want the zebras to be around 70 to 78%. And for your maximum highlight clipping to be set 103 to 104. And that is the max that you wanna go before you lose your colors to the void. Even though S-Log2 doesn't technically clip highlights until 106, 107, this gives you a little bit of a buffer and the quality really deteriorates anything past 104. Also, I took out all the added saturation from the picture profile before I shot any of this. So I wasn't using any of the other workarounds and I didn't end up with much of those colorful blocky artifacts. So I might've done something here. So keeping all that in mind, I went to shoot some video clips. I intentionally set up a scene where the proper skin tone exposure was at about 10,000 ISO, just for demonstration purposes. But I shot the video clips starting at ISO 800 and worked my way up. I shot 800, 2000, 4000, 8000, 12500, 16000, 20000, and 32000 ISO. And then in post, I matched all the exposures to the middle exposed clip, raising the exposure of the lower exposed ones and lowering the exposure of the overexposed ones. So I tried to manually grade all the clips first and then in a separate area, I dropped the Sony LUT on top of another copy of the clips. The manual grade worked okay, but after seeing how the other test clips, especially the higher exposed ones, took the Sony LUTs, that's what I decided worked best for the colors, the color accuracy. When it came to recovering way underexposed clips, I preferred the manual grade as it helped keep some of the blocky color noise away. But when it came to bringing the overexposed clips down, the Sony LUT did a very good job with the colors, but the manual grade did a slightly better job at keeping the blockiness under control. So after I matched all the exposures, I adjusted the curves to crush the dark backgrounds because that's the type of shot I was trying to replicate here, because this is the kind of product shot I did where I found all the noise that inspired this video. So everything here is now color corrected and I match the exposure based on the spider cube here in the shot, link in the description. So where does that take us with the noise level throughout these shots? Well, before we go any further, please let me know down in the comments if you try out any of my findings here. Let me know what kind of results you get. I'm genuinely curious if this will be helpful to any of you. Also, like and subscribe. Let's look at the results. 
Well, the ISO 800 had to be brought up by nearly three and a half stops in post, and it was an absolute disaster. Some very extreme blocky artifacts, inaccurate colors, losing a lot of details in the shadows because, well, they were so dark to begin with, and the noise just dances everywhere. Super distracting. I'd call this completely unusable. Now keep in mind, you have to overexpose S-Log by around two stops. So looking at this on the back of the camera can be deceiving because it just looks barely too dark. But the result is practically unusable. This is about the same story with the ISO 2000 and 4000 clips, uh, with marginal improvements as we step up. But those shots looked even brighter on the back of the camera, so be very careful when you're shooting S-Log to uh, focus on your zebras, not the image, how it looks to you. So once we hit 8,000 ISO, we get to very acceptable image quality. This only being increased by about a half a stop to match the ISO 12,500 clip, which was kind of our baseline for the exposure. However, there is still a little bit of color blocking here. But the color blocking has gotten better as we step up, and it continues to get better all the way up through ISO 32,000. So ISO 12,500, got the LUT applied, and a little bit of a curve adjustment, and that was it. The noise in this shot is pretty low, com especially compared to the previous shots, but it still seems to move and dance around a lot, which can be distracting when you're trying to focus on something. It's just sitting over there, all this movement going on in the shadows. But moving on, we get to now what most would consider to be very high ISO shots. And these are increasingly overexposed, and I brought them down in post to the proper exposure. This is where things get a little interesting. The ISO 16,000 was brought down by one half stop. The ISO 20,000 was brought down by one full stop. And the ISO 32,000 was brought down one and a half stops. So this surprised me because I really didn't think ISO 32,000 was gonna be usable at all. But it kind of answered my question with this. If you can only change the ISO, keep cranking until you start clipping, and then back off just a little bit and darken the rest of it in post. I really wasn't expecting ISO 32000 to be usable, much less the cleanest image at the end of the process. So having said all that, increasing your ISO will reduce your dynamic range, but not every shot needs to be HDR. So blow out the highlights sometimes if you don't need them, and you may end up with a much cleaner image. But if you need the highlights, you're going to want to respect the zebras. So set them at 104, and don't go past that. Well, I think this ended up being kind of a long-winded and maybe dense video. If you liked it, give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know down in the comments if you try what I've said here out and get good results. Maybe I'm completely off base, but let me know. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.